rides against the manor where tyranny is lord, rich and poor, the gathering gold. It's a village of the Free Weavers of Quincy. Come on, Kurt. Lucas, John, Alfred, Simon, get the looms into the church with the women and the children. The rest of you get behind me and bring anything that you can fight with. Well, well, you're mad to fight them. They're bound to win in the end. What can we do? How long can we go on? We're doing what's right, and that's enough. Let's stop it, Will. The longer you fight them, the worse it will be for everyone. We must defend what is ours. Why don't you take on someone your own size? So our prisoner will volunteer a little more information. Well? Mercy, mercy, I surrender. You have no choice. Now tell us who are you? And who's the leader of your black company? My name is Travers. And my lord is... Top villains murdering their own comrades. They seem more than anxious to conceal their identity. Perhaps with luck we can change that. We had the protection of the Lord's arms, at least. Have you forgotten the feel of the iron collar around your necks? We're free men now, and free men will stay and fight. Where's the profit in freedom? If we can't live in peace to work at our trade. If our wool is burned and our cloth destroyed. I say that the serf's iron collar is worse than the hangman's noose. They'll hang me before I'll wear a slave's collar again. You're a brave-spoken man, Will. But what are we going to do? For food and shelter. To protect our families. We stand alone at Bodie. Mercy of these black brigands. Well, forgive me for asking, but how was it the Weavers of Quincy won their freedom? We wove the cloth for Lord Quincy's company when they rode off to the Crusades. The day he set sail, he struck off our collars and gave us our name. The Villagers of the Free Weavers of Quincy. And by all the saints, I'll die before I'll surrender it. But who are they be fighting? What do they want of us? We don't even know. Well, that's what I intend to find out. But how? They kill their own man to keep their secret. Aye, but I have an idea. They left his horse in his tunic. The horse? Aye. The horse may tell us more than his master. At least he won't lie. That's Come true on. enough. When I was a boy, we used to drive Sir William's cattle along that road. It'll be strange if she goes that way. Yes, very strange. Well, we'll see. This is the road. Belford Castle. You were right, Gert. It does look as if Sir William's behind this. Well, what do we do now? I'm going in. If I'm not back by high noon, you'll know I'm a prisoner. You know what to do. Yeah, but that's all very well. How do I find you and when? to a man's murder can be inconvenient. Why have you come here anyway? To find out what you hope to gain from raiding the free weavers of Quincy. Well, Sir Ivanhoe, you being clever wants too often. I'm going to have you arrested. Oh, I don't think so, Sir William. On what pretense will you have me arrested? Simply because I've caught you red-handed 
in Maltravers' bloodstained tunic. Only a man who could have murdered him could have got hold of these things. You seem to forget that I have a whole village of free men to witness the fact that I did not kill him. You may have, but they won't even be us. Before the day is out, your freemen will be my serfs, and I doubt if they'll be eager to testify against their new lord and master. So that's it. As the black brigand, you terrorize the free weavers. As Sir William, you offer them your benevolent protection, provided they become your serfs. Very neatly put. Good. I've now found out what I came to learn. I'm afraid enough. you've come too late, Sir Ivanhoe. Ah! Arrest him! <laughs> Ivan Ho's friends and admirers to see him hang from the gallows as a brigand. that you say? Speak up, lad. I said that I'm gonna borrow your cart. I don't care where you're going. Dear, I'm very sorry to have to do this. Oh, so am I. I'm Hugo, the woodcutter. Good day to you. I'm very sorry. No, honestly, I, I was very sorry to do that. And this is the course of wisdom I advise. Choose amongst yourselves. Accept service with me, and I will protect you against the black brigands. It will be my responsibility. And if you value your homes and families, it is your only hope. What hope is there for a man who trades his freedom to save his life? Come, man, you make too much of the affair. Lord De Quincey struck the colors from your necks. But freedom has to be defended. And you require the means to protect it. Talk it amongst yourselves and let me know your answer. I do not wish to hurry you, but time presses. Let me know when you come to your decision. What shall we do? Do? Let him fight. And die if needs be, but let us remain free men. I'd rather be a live serf than a dead fiend. Yeah. Is there not one man among you willing to stand with me in this thing? Very well, then. Grovel to Sir William and beg him to save your wretched skins. I'll be no party. Mary, Will must stand with us or we're lost. Sir William said all or none. Leave him to me. I'll talk to him. Well. Don't ask me to sell myself into serf to Mary. I would rather die first. You do that, Will. What would become of me and my child? We've managed so far. Managed? You mean we've existed in days and nights of fear? starting at the sound of a galloping horse, cowering in the shadows while they fire our homes, the certainty that one day you will provoke them into killing you. And have we the right... And have we the right to bargain away our child's freedom? Where do you think you're going? Hey, what'd you say, lad? Speak up, boy. I said, who goes? Hey, well, oh, yes, yes, who goes? The woodcutter, yes, yes. Come on, yes. What you got there? Hey, hey. Oh, you got stones in your mouth, just like that boy at the gate. Speak up, boy, speak up, don't grumble. What's in that cart? Uh, eh? What? No, 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 no. What's back home tending the sheep? Oh, I'm you, go. Come on, come on. Come on. <coughs> hey, hey! What do you want? Speak up, speak up, I go. 
I brought the firewood. I don't want any firewood. Go away. I know my way. Where's the turnkey? I'm the turnkey. Oh, I've got a donkey. Now listen, would pay? I just. I'm very sorry, but you shouldn't shout at a man like that. God, over here. And where have you been? A plain soldier, sir. Come on, you gotta get out of here before he wakes up. Got my sword and tunic? Yes, on the horse. I... So we do swear fealty to our lord, Sir William of Belford. So we do swear fealty to our lord, Sir William of Belford. And by this instrument do surrender all our lives and property. We're too late. Our sons and daughters and all that is theirs. Our sons and daughters and all that is theirs. Our country's fallen on evil days when free men surrender themselves to serfdom. It's never too late to fight for freedom, Guy. Get Willaloom. Tell him to get the most trusted men and meet me in the church at sundown. <laughs> I bring bad news. Sir William is the leader of the Black Brigands. But why, if Sir William is the Black Brigands? You wear the answer around your necks. Sir William is responsible for the terror which forced you back into bondage. Your news makes our fate worse, Sir Eisenhower. But what is done cannot be undone. And those who will not fight for their freedom deserve no better. Would you still fight if fighting would regain their freedom? You know my feelings, I'll share them. have a plan and we'll lead us. Then every man of us will fight. Aye. Good. That's all I want to hear. Now, Sir William must lead the brigands again for the last time. They've done their work. There's no reason for them to ride again. Then we shall have to give them a reason. Sir William is hardly likely to remain inactive if the people of Quincy show open rebellion. But if he rides, we shall be killed. Oh, I don't think so. I have a feeling that Lord Quincy may return home. Lord Quincy is dead. You say you made the tunics for Lord Quincy and his company. Can you weave the same tunics for yourselves? That we can, Sir Ivanhoe, with good heart. But we have no arms. Don't worry about them. I'm a blacksmith. Sir Ivanhoe, hmm? I wove this tunic for myself. It's the exact replica of the one Lord Quincy wore into battle. Here, sit down. I'll take your collar off. You're the last. You're a fine craftsman, Will. It'll be an honor to wear it. Some of the men have been worrying about armor. These tunics are poor protection against steel. Oh, I was rather hoping that Sir William would supply our needs. <laughs> Sir William? Thanks, Guy. I don't understand. Well, I'm no Will. A constable from Sir William and an armed company. They're riding into the square. Oh, you see? Our armor with the compliments of Sir William. I think we'll have to have a word with the constable a little later. Yeah, put your horse collar on. Oh, uh, Mr. Constable, I, I, I mean my Lord Constable, uh, there's a fellow uh, inside the church, a regular troublemaker, and I thought maybe a, a person of your great authority could handle him. You're quite right. That is what I am here for, that, among other things, you were right in coming to me, lad. Now, where is he? If you follow me, my Lord. I lead the way. Now, where is this troublemaker? May I present Sir Ivanhoe? Sir Ivanhoe? Mercy, sir. I meant no harm. In my heart, I, I've always been loyal to King Richard. Oh. What, what do you want of me? I want you to call your men in here one by one. I promise you they won't be harmed, but should they resist? <laughs> Did you let one of the guards escape his plan? <laughs> Aye, he's right to win him as fast as his legs can carry him. Good, that means that William and his brigands will be out in full force soon. Thank you.
take a will. Oh, good friends. I never rode into battle at the head of a prouder company of freemen. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that the spirit of Lord Quincy and the lion heart of our king rides with us. Hooray! I'd feel much happier if I knew that they wouldn't recognize the uh, inhabitants we've left behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least they're worthy of Belford men. <laughs> They'll fool them long enough to get them into the trap, Sir Ivanhoe. <laughs> it was a good idea of yours, Will. Well, are the rest of the villagers secure? They are, sir, I hope. Good. Then let us go to our positions. Well, well, go on. They fell upon us one by one. I'm the only one that escaped. So they've forgotten the black brigands already. These weavers must be taught a lesson they'll never forget. Tell the captain of the guard to prepare to ride to Quincy. At once. I ride with him. Aye, my lord. Quincy, come back, sir. Quincy, impossible. It is Lord De Quincy, sir. Look at the Crusaders' tabard. You take over, girls. I'm going after Sir William. That's all very well. But I hope nothing's happened to Sir Ivanhoe. Sir William's a very good swordsman. Uh, don't worry about Sir Ivanhoe. He can take care of himself. Look, there he is. William, I return home to find you harrying the men to whom I gave freedom. You have betrayed your knighthood. What should be the fate of such a man? Yeah! That would be just. Yet, if you will sign a deed guaranteeing to the craftsmen of Quincy freedom from your interference, we'll let bygones be bygones and try to live as friends under good King Richard's peace. Put your mark here, Sir William. You made a wise decision, Sir William. 
Sir Ivanhoe. So it was a trick. Oh, and talking of trickery, it might amuse certain friends of his to hear how the craftsmen of Quincy pitted their wits against the knight of the realm <laughs> to his disadvantage. Oh, yeah. But fear not, Sir William. The secret of tonight's work will be kept as long as you honor your guarantee. Come on. Well, true matter, Quincy, you've won your own freedom. Guard it well, and remember the day when you won it. You wore the coats of those men who died for a true ideal. We'll remember how you stood by us against the Black Brigands, Sir Ivanhoe. Our efforts would have amounted a little without your quick wit and sharp sword. Oh, we'll call it a partnership, Willaloo. Maybe one day such partnerships will build a nation. Speed of lightning, bold and brave and gay. In 